Hey y'all, Sam Sears again. So, uh, many episodes ago, I mentioned that I'd be doing a few tutorials on a few builds here and there. It was specifically on the episode that I was revealing plans for a, a tree farm. I figured just create a separate tutorial that goes into a machine's working details. This way, I'm not eating up so much uh, video time on the uh, su survival series. While well, still trying to be helpful with everything to as well at the same time with that, so... Lately, in my survival series, I've been uh, more in a grinding planning stage rather than actual building. So I've been doing a lot of things in the creative test world right now. So I figured, why not share some of the findings? So in this tutorial here... I'm looking at to cover a uh, an easy way of generating oxygen and nitrogen. There's two ways you can do this through an electrolyzer, where you can get where you can get oxygen and hydrogen, or you can just use a centrifuge system with a compressor working in tandem to create the oxygen and nitrogen. I'm choosing to go to this route, route because one, you'll be needing a fair. This is this, it's not as expensive to produce oxygen, and two, it's um, producing nitrogen, which is something that's crucial for aluminum processing. Not that you need it immediately, but it helps to speed things up a little bit when you just have a, uh, a bunch of EBS operating at MV power. So I've got two designs for you, an absolute basic one and a... Uh, more advanced one. I'll go over the most basic one first. So ideally, you've got a compressor compressing a bunch of the uh, empty cells, B cells, to turn them into a uh, compressed air. And uh, and when those and when five of those compressed air goes into the centrifuge, the centrifuge will then be processing five of those air cells to produce almost four buckets of nitrogen in its output slot and a bucket's worth of uh, oxygen. Now I have a bunch of uh, conveyor, a bunch of LB conveyor modules outputting its uh, cells into each respective spot. Problem is, is that there's no easy way of being able to filter items yet with uh, currently starting off an LB tier. So I'm having to resort to uh, pre-partitioning a bunch of drawers here, slapping them down, put the items, and taking the drawer key to lock them to create a uh, forced filter system. So that way, the machine can only put certain items in. So I've got the empty cells being immediately sent back into the compressor to convert into uh, air, compressed air cells. And I've got the oxygen cells that are neatly being deposited into the GT tanks. Whenever these uh, cells deposit their, their uh, contents in it, it outputs an empty cell. And with another conveyor module going towards the compressor, it too gets the uh, oxygen, the, not the uh, empty cell to create more of the uh, compressed air cells. So the cycle is at two directions repeats itself. Well, I can just automatically output the fluid, the nitrogen fluid, out the out into the GT tanks there, without having to ha without having to worry of uh, of any cells going in unwanted places. So I. Oh, anyways, I must be having an output going out to the outer cells or something. Either way, I'm managing to get this to work just fine the way it is. Something I do recommend, though, you're producing almost four times the nitrogen for every one cell of of auction for the system. So I would put the uh, 
low voltage fluid tank, low voltage uh, overflow valve at the last oxygen tank so that we are able to build up the last pieces of oxygen. All up to the last tank so this way we don't have a whole bunch of machines running at once. And then with nitrogen, have the first frontmost machine have the uh, have the uh, overflow valve too as well. This way, you're not overproducing nitrogen so much to a point where you're bottlenecking your production. And then you can just route all these both items th through both fl types of fluids through the tubes through wherever you need them to go, whether it's through EBFs. In terms of your EBF being powered MV, four sets of the compressor and centrifuge systems will be enough to fully sufficient supply an EBF for iron processing at the uh, at the basic uh, steel processing level. Now, when you uh, make the arc furnace to uh, make raw iron out of to process it out of, though, this will not sustain for long. For the raw iron steel processing is dramatically faster at a big margin. So you would need a bigger compressor system if you were to be uh, steel processing with raw iron with this. But yeah, this will work with. Uh, but yeah, this will work with steel processing, and you'd be for sure be producing more nitrogen than what you'd be needing easily. So this can easily be distributed to aluminum processing, and when you hit MV and decide to go uh, pyrolyzed ovens, you can use the nitrogen to double the uh, processing speed of your pyrolyzed ovens. So this system is definitely worth setting up early on. Now, when you advance enough into MV tier though, you then will be able to do a setup a lot like this. I'm using advanced centrifuges, but uh, advanced centrifuges are essentially twice as fast at four times the energy compared to what the uh, basic centrifuge system is. Now you may notice real fast that there's no uh, drawer filters. That's because when you start making polyethylene and uh, MV tier, you'd be able to make the uh, item filter covers, specifically the export filters, which you can then specify what the uh, what items in the output slot will be exported. So I'm able to have certain items be exported into the respective slots. As a uh, important side note, though, you will want to make use of the screwdriver to right-click on advanced compressors to allow its output slot to accept inputs. That there will be crucial. I have both of the outputs of the uh, advanced compressors outputting nitrogen as in its liquid state into the uh, Jeep tanks here. Same deal with the auction cells to fed through these Jeep tanks and routed back through the uh, compressors. And the cycle will keep on looping and looping and looping. And all this, all these four machines here, can be powered by one MV gas turbine. Or steam turbine, or whatever turbine that you're using, as long as you're able to supply almost a full amp worth of MV power. Same deal with these LV machines when it comes to, when, when it comes to supplying an LV amp worth of power. An LV turbine will suffice for these four machines too as well and up to four machines only. Other than that, you'll be overdrawing what the uh, turbines can provide. And with the uh, overflow valve placements in this design, same idea. Nitrogen at the front, oxygen at the back. And for most cases, you should be good. Now with that being said, should you wind up coming to a circumstance where uh, oxygen is being a bottleneck for nitrogen production though, you can always swap the uh, overflow valve into the front GT tank. It's just that you'd be giving up a whole batch of oxygen to uh, cashing up and would be having all these machines running all the time. That there would be the drawbacks of doing that, but if at the end, if you have so much power to a point where it doesn't matter, not too big of a worry. 
Now that I've pretty much covered the basics of how this whole system works, um, how many cells would I recommend in these systems? Well, no more than 10 per, per uh, centrifuge modules. Reason being is that the centrifuge needs five cells in order to process. If you have five being already processed, this process and automatically deposited into centrifuge. By the time the centrifuge gets done processing the compressed air cells, it will be having more than additional five air cells already available to process. So, key efficiency here is to always have the centrifuges running at whenever the system at peak capacity. It's alright if the compressors are not running, it means they have nothing to process for all of its products are being put into the centrifuge. As long as the centrifuge is running, they're always at a constant oxygen and nitrogen production. Now there's one more small, actually there's one more detail to as well that I briefly touched with, and it's with the drawers here. Because the filters removing the uh, you need to have the uh, drawers acting as a in-place filter. You're able to treat these modules completely uh, tileable, theoretically infinitely, as long as you have the uh, fuel to supply all the gas turbines with. So this here is infinitely expandable, very easily. That's the nice thing about this, they're able to have a very compact build that uh, looks pretty well clean looking and organized for a GT7 machine. You can do a similar thing with these here, except you'd be needing two tubes. You do not want these drawers sharing its cells into uh, multiple compressors. Next thing you know, you're having the system mix matching uh, its cells and uh, causing uh, one machine to accumulate more cells than the other. Which can, which can stall nitrogen production, oxygen and nitrogen production due to the uh, centrifuge having insufficient, insufficient compressed air cells. So, if you want to make more of these modules with the uh, drawer filters, have them separate, have them have their own separate drawers. As long as they strictly the one machine to one drawer ratio, you should be able to have a constant uh, production going. The only reason why I have these drawers here is because I am unable to produce the export filter covers to uh, better sort out the uh, items to certain areas. So this is a early and cheap way of bypassing that problem in LV with this compressor system. So both setups are good. It's just a matter of having access to certain resources to really uh, make the benefits stand out. Anyways, y'all. With this being a uh, tutorial video and all that, and I'll be doing this with other uh, tutorial videos, I'm welcome for y'all to uh, answer any questions, and whenever I can, I will answer them to the best of my ability. That is one thing I can say for certain there, whenever I can with time permits for me. So I do welcome that. You always can use the uh, comments on uh, YouTube for that. And I may directly answer you, or I may create a video in direct response to any uh, trending questions. Anyways, I wish y'all well. And y'all take care.